Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm here with my cat Leia on the 4th of July as I inaugurate my birthday month with a tag. This is the Try a Story tag, which was started by Jen Campbell. I'll link to her channel below. It's a take on another famous booktube tag, the Try a Chapter tag. I actually did this tag last year on my birthday as well, and I'll link to that also below. One of the collections that I tried is this one. The Best American Short Stories of the Century as edited by John Updike. I thought I'd start this video by citing six stories that I read in here and picking my favorite. We have Little Selves by Mary Lerner, A Jury of Her Peers by Susan Glaspell, The Other Woman by Sherwood Anderson, The Golden Honeymoon by Ring Lardner, Blood Burning Moon by Jean Toomer, and The Killers by Ernest Hemingway. My favorite was A Jury of Her Peers by Susan Glaspell. It was originally published in Every Week in 1917. The magazine published fiction and other stories during the World War I era. A little research shows that this fictional short story was based on a real murder that Glaspell covered as a reporter. She originally wrote it as a one-act play called Trifles. The story revolves around two women who are asked to accompany the menfolk to a crime scene where it appears that the wife killed her husband. Glaspell slowly sets up the scene of the women recalling that they hadn't visited this murderess in decades and that she probably lived a lonely life. While the men look elsewhere for clues and scoff at the women for taking a closer look at uh, their compatriots' knitting, they're the ones who discover the murderess's motivations for her crime. Anywho, on to the five collections that I will be trying a story from for this tag. First, we have American Innovations by Rivka Galchin. I'll read from the cover copy. The tales in this groundbreaking collection are secretly in conversation with canonical stories, reimagined from the perspective of female characters. Just as Wallace Stevens's Anecdote of a Jar responds to John Keats's Ode on a Grecian Urn, Galchin's The Lost Order covertly recapitulates James Thurber's The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. While the region of unlikeliness is a smoky and playful mirror to George Jorge Luis Borges's The Aleph. The title story, American Innovations, revisits Nikolai Gogol's The Nose. By turns realistic and fantastical, witty and lyrical, these marvelously uneasy stories are deeply emotional and written in exuberant, pitch-perfect prose. Whether exploring the tensions in a mother-daughter relationship or the finer points of time travel, Yelchin is a writer like none other today. I certainly get that uh, feeling with these stories that they'll be more surreal than uh, most of the others that I've read and uh, not sure exactly how I'll feel about it but it's been on my list for a while so I thought I'd give it a try. This next collection has also been on my list for a long time, not that you can tell what it is. It's uh, the stories of Fanny Hurst <laughs> um, and uh, my parents got it for me for the holidays songs cover. <laughs> But um, I will read uh, from the copy that I found online. In her heyday between 1910 and the mid-1930s, Fanny Hurst was the most popular writer in America. 29 films were based on her novels and short stories. Her fiction was not only beloved by readers, but also acclaimed by reviewers and regularly included in Best American Short Stories. And yet, not one of her books remains in print. The publication of this selection of Fanny Hurst's best short stories is sure to propel a long overdue revival and reassessment of Hurst's work. No reader of these 30 stories spanning the years of 1912 to 1935 can fail to recognize Hurst's depth, intelligence, and artistry as a writer. <clears throat> Hurst was one of the premier literary chroniclers of the poor and working class urban life in the early 20th century America especially the vibrant life of Jewish immigrant communities. She was also a pioneer in writing about the lives of working women, from maids to secretaries to garment workers, from prostitutes to artists. And she wove these threads into captivating, deeply human stories that capture her characters' struggles, triumphs, conflicts, and loves. Speaking of anthology works, we have next, The Vintage Book of Contemporary American Short Stories, edited by Tobias Wolfe. I don't know, I think several years ago I was in a real kick about uh, buying these sort of anthologies inspired by best American short stories. <laughs> and now they're on my shelf and I think I have to give them a try. And again, in anthologies, we have great short stories by American women as edited by Candace Ward. 
I really have no recollection of where this story came from, but it does have this bookmark of Virginia Woolf in it, <laughs> who was not an American female writer, but uh, <laughs> hey, still a bookmark of Virginia Woolf, so I'm, I'm in. <laughs> And finally, in the interconnected short stories department, we have You May See a Stranger by Paula Wyman. It's a, a collection that crisscrosses through the life of her main character, Miranda Weber. I actually heard her read from this at uh, the Writer's Center in Bethesda, Maryland. She's a very local author, and it really intrigued me, so I'm excited to give it a go. Okay, so there we have it. And I'll be back once I read each of the first short stories and give you my thoughts on which one I'll be continuing with. And I'm back. The first story I have to talk about from the Rivka Galchen collection is The Lost Order, based on The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, although I haven't read it. I saw the movie. <laughs> It's not a surreal story, but meant to be a little hazy on the truth. Was the narrator fired or let go from her job? She's supposed to be cooking a chicken order for some sort of client, but can't remember what type of chicken to cook. She's looking for her husband's wedding ring, and the story ends with a fight between the two of them. I can definitely see how it's about a narrator wanting to escape from her life because she keeps daydreaming and going off on tangents. It intrigued me more than I thought it would. This is from Fanny Hurst, The Joy of Living. It's a very short story that was written in 1909. It features a working class family. The mother is laboring over dinner in her small flat and shushing her husband when he enters, lest he wake the smallest children. But his promotion at work sends her over the edge of happiness so that even when she wakes her children, she considers it a lucky day. It's a great scene for setting up some perspective. In the Tobias Wolf Contemporary American Writers Collection, River of Names by Dorothy Allison. Uh, she's the writer of The Bastard Out of Carolina, and it shows. This narrator's family faces all sorts of hardship from childhood upward. Rape, other physical abuse, accidental death, and probably the tamest thing is a cousin who gets her kids taken away from her for being an unfit mother. Occasionally, this is juxtaposed against the narrator's later relationship with a far more sheltered woman. But the way that it was written, it felt a little oversaturated, uh, I think. There wasn't a lot of point to all of these uh, horrible anecdotes other than to say, man, these characters really have it really, really rough. But the ending involves a scene between the narrator and her sister, and it moves into more interesting uh, territory. Now I'm on to great short stories by American women. Uh, we start with Life in the Iron Mills by Rebecca Harding Davis, which was first published in the Atlantic Monthly in 1861 and chronicles the factory work world of that time. It's a long short story with a lot of characters and it doesn't really fit my current mood, but now that I know what to expect, I do want to return to this at a later time. It was apparently very popular with famous authors like uh, Louisa May Alcott and Nathaniel Hawthorne and very innovative for its day. And finally, the first story in the Paula Wyman book is Driver's Education, and it starts off the tenure of these interconnected short stories. We meet the narrator in a class where she has her first sexual experiences with uh, boys, juxtaposed against some racial tension with the teacher. The setting, a dusky basement in a department store, is starkly realized, as is the teacher's physical deformity. He lost a leg while serving in Vietnam. All of the emotions feel really palpable, but I think I'm also not in the mood for interconnected short stories right now, so I'm gonna put it down for the time being. So, moment of truth, which book will I choose? It's down to the first two, and I think I'm going to go with the Rivka Galchen. It's a short collection, it's from the library, <laughs> and the first story surprised me, so why not? That about covers it for me. I hope that all of my fellow Americans had a great Independence Day and that everybody else had a great fourth. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.